actually still have two panelists and we will go to the next panelist, which is our friend Sarah Thompson from Black Lives Matter organizers and also West Papua Solidarity. And please, Sarah, I will uh, give you um, a key question for you to respond. Um, so our quick key question is, you know, racism has become a global concern. So how does the West Papuan anti-racist uprising resonate with you as a Black Lives Matter activist, but also as an organizer and someone who has visited West Papua before? Please, Sarah. Wonderful. Terima kasih, everyone. Selamat pagi to you all, but selamat malam to me. I got to learn those words alongside you and others as we visited, prayed, cheered, cried, and shared stories between West Papuan folks and solidarity activists around the world. I am here tonight in the U.S. speaking to you all who are in the future for me. And so I know there is a future here, and that encourages me. I am here because Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And we have been marching in the streets all week. And as we march, we have lots of time to talk. And so we ask each other, what moves you to be out here today? And so we share our stories with one another. And one of the things I share is that I share that the Black Lives Matter movement is global. It looks different in each place, but because anti-blackness is global, our movement to address racism is global. And I share about what I saw in West Papua. I think of Hini and others who were students, West Papuan students in Jakarta, who ordered an apartment. And when they went to go and pick up the keys, all of a sudden, the landlord saw that they were Papuan, that they were black. And somehow the apartment was no longer available. That type of housing discrimination is unacceptable. It speaks to the discrimination that we heard about um, from Jacob and Usman were speaking about it. Thank you to the other panelists. It's an honor to be with you, to hear your story again. And to be able to speak from this location of the US, which actually has a role to play in the subjugation you are facing too to say that you are not alone, and to say that more and more people are hearing your story. And it can't happen fast enough. I'm glad that we are here to mobilize, to put pressure on the court to release the activists. And as I talk about uh, West Papua, some people don't know about it yet. But I tell them, do you know that island there in the Pacific, that on the eastern side, has curvy lines and on the western side has curvy lines and there's a straight line right down the middle people say ah yes i think i've seen that you can say well you know that straight line is a colonial border because colonists like them straight lines whereas our communities and our watersheds operate very differently and so people can locate the place in their mind sometimes i have to pull out a map on google to show them and to talk about tanah papua talk about Great Papua and the struggle and the connection. And when I share the struggle, people say, oh, I understand that. That's like what's happening here. Oh, I understand that. Wow, that's worse than what's happening here. What can I do to support? And so here we are struggling for our lives, saying no to police brutality saying no to voter suppression, saying no to unjust incarceration. And yet, and yet, we know that none of us are free in the U.S. until all of us are free. And that means until West Papua is free, we will continue to march. We will continue to speak out. We will continue to bring our humanity to the system and say, this is a time where it's all of us or none. 
There's no longer us versus them. It's all of us are none. And we choose all of us. So that's why I'm here staying up late tonight to share with you all what I've seen. I agree with what Paul Usman said. Racism is when people feel superior due to the ways in which uh, they see themselves and their economic interests and their imperial position. But I want to say that racism is that prejudice plus power, the power to act, the power of privilege, the power of institutions that give some privilege over others. And so we're here not only to transform people's feelings, but we are here to transform the state, which is why it is ridiculous that they are being tried for treason. They are making their state better. They are making their lives and the lives of the, of the countries better. They should not be tried for treason. They should be given an award for lifting up the full humanity. When we address racism, it's about speaking truth. And to be able to speak, you need to have breath. So that's why we chant in the streets sometimes, I can't breathe. Because the knee of the system, the knees of the police officers are on our neck, choking out our lives. But we still have breath in our lungs. I'm going to talk about how anti-racism work is about speaking truth to power. But first, I just want us to pause and to place a hand on our neck to feel your breath, that sacred breath, or a hand on your heart to feel that blood pumping, or a hand on your belly, your belly button, which connects you to every generation that came before you that has made you the gift to this moment. It's with all our life that we speak truth to power, with all our hearts with all our voice. When we speak truth to power, we speak about how these systems of oppression interlock. How in the law and the police is supported by how education is done, which should increase the autonomy and self-determination of all people, but yet is not inclusive. When we speak truth, we speak truth of our shared humanity, that we are all human. As, as my Jacob has already said. When we speak truth, we speak the truth right now at a crucial moment. Climate change cannot be resolved without addressing racism. The same systems that gave us racism gave us a type of economy that treats the earth like a supply house and a sewer. Both are connected to the same white supremacist capitalist patriarchal hegemony. And so when you work to address racism, you are working on the environment. The environmental issue will not be resolved without paying attention to how black people the world over are treated. And that's why it's so important to understand that the August and September 2019 uprisings were anti-racist uprisings. When we understand the impulse of addressing racism, we also feel the same impulse that we are all a crucial part of Earth's functioning, that all beings on the planet have a right to live, that we are one of many. So Jacob talked to the fact that racism has its roots in colonization. I want to speak to a very particular aspect of colonization, and that's called the Doctrine of Discovery. The Doctrine of Discovery is a series of papal bulls written between 1452 and 1493. It essentially let the Christian church in Europe say to the nations of Europe, whatever lands you find that are not ruled by Christians, those people are less than human and the land is yours for the taking. This is one of those root causes. So as we think about how do we turn this global moment of uprising into a movement, 
It's to look at that deep root of the doctrine of discovery. 1493, the Pope said, okay, I put a line here into Cayetera. Portugal, you can have all the lands east. Spain, you can have all the lands west. Took authority that wasn't his to give a state the power to discover, take, invade, and subdue. This doctrine of discovery is what allowed for the colonization of Papua. It's what allowed for the beginning of the transatlantic trade in African bodies. What allowed for the destruction of indigenous peoples here on this continent and every continent. And so in one response has been to look at, the, to, to, to go to the UN and say, we, we need a universal declaration on the rights of indigenous people that says no to this doctrine of discovery. And so I put two links in the chat that you can follow at another time to see how our work on Black Lives Matter relates to indigenous struggles worldwide and how we can come together to repudiate the doctrine of discovery and to speak to the prejudice plus power, the power to take land, the power to subdue. This is what we will undo together if we are Preserve life on planet Earth. There are a lot of allies on this call, a lot of people who have been moved to tears, who are ready to act. And sometimes, allies, you feel like small or afraid or powerless. But actually, your work also really makes a difference. Being able to put pressure and utilize the privilege and the comfort that you have because of privilege. To use your humanity in service of all of our humanity. That's what we need. So with bold humility, let us continue to contact all of the representatives that we can at the UN level, at the Australian level, here in the US, in Indonesia, in Papua, to release these prisoners to release these seven anti-racist activists. This, the beginning of the release for all political prisoners in Papua and around the world. Your call makes a difference. Turning this moment into a movement includes you thinking about how might you take your learning from today's webinar and share with someone else? How, can, how might you develop a curriculum for where you teach? Or get some of your neighbors together at a safe social distance, of course, to think together, how might our neighborhood support West Papua? If you're part of a religious organization, every time you get together, how might you create a curriculum? How might you continue to educate people about this? Because this anti-racist uprising is also to preserve your humanity. And if you're so bold, you might even bring this up at a family reunion. That's one of the hardest spots. But we have, we all know people, we can all participate in the movement. We know that here in the US, we are not free until you are free. And so Black Lives Matter is a global movement because anti-blackness is global. And anti-blackness is a particular form of racism that's based on exploitation and that's based on devaluing our customs, our ways of being, our ancestors, our history, and everything that we have brought to the global community. And so, as Anti-Black Youth is Global, we say globally that Black Lives Matter, and we will be with you as we transform and work together. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for um very, very uh, strong and reflective words. And when you say, I, can, I can't breathe, and that exactly what in many times, like West Papuan always said, I can't breathe, because this is the weakened part of human body. And many West Papuan always uh, have like being treated in this particular part of their body, so then they become weakness.